These are two of my friends that uh, I spent quite a bit of time with. I know it's sad, but hey, each to his own. Um, I like doodling with guitars. I'm not a guitarist. I just like doodling with them. And I certainly like uh, electronics associated with guitars. Designed and built a couple of uh, tube amps, pedals, and so on and so forth. And one of the things that's always bothered me about uh, guitars and playing guitars, especially the frequency and the amount that I play, are these bloody things, the cables. So a wireless system has always been something on my radar. And um, I've found there are quite a few really good ones out there. The Relay, line, uh, Relay G10 from Line 6 is one that's really worthy of note at the moment. Price is not bad at all. But there's one other problem that I have, and that is that I'm a addicted uh, DIYer. So I like to make my own systems. And a project to create a wireless guitar system has been on my to-do list for quite a while. And I think I finally found what I need to uh, give it a go and uh, see how it works. So if you're interested, keep watching. The other day I found these guys on... Uh, sale on eBay and um, it piqued my curiosity because it mentioned a particular chip that I've had my eye on for some time and that is the uh, NRF 24L01 Plus from Nordic Semiconductor and those are the two little guys that you see over here that one there and that one there. Now Nordic Semiconductor has made quite a few of these chips and they're used uh, quite a lot for remote sensing and telemetry and so on and so forth. But they've also been used for uh, streaming audio. They actually made uh, a chip that was a stereo CD quality audio streamer. And it was a receive and a transmit chip. You had one to transmit, one to receive. And I tried that one before. Um, I wasn't too happy with it because there are a few things that I overlooked, which I'll get into in a moment. But these guys came up, and I'll link below um, in the description where I got them from and how much I paid for them. And I found that it was quite a reasonable price just to experiment with. Um, this is not to say that I'm going to create something better than the Relay G10 from Line 6 or the G30, because I really think that system is great. But this thing makes it more fun to, to try out. Now what this is, is the red, the one with the red LED is a transmitter. There's a T down there. And the one with the green LED is the receiver. And you connect your audio input. Now what this is supposed to be, is supposed to be a stereo line in. Left and right with ground in the middle, you connect your audio input there and what you get on this end is audio output line level as well. So left channel, right channel and your ground line level. So um, that is something to look at because the guitar certainly doesn't produce a line level signal. The input impedance of this guy is going to be too low. It's probably going to be about 20k, whereas a guitar would probably like to see more like a one mega ohm input impedance. Um, I'm not sure how the output of this guy is going to be like into the amp because this will be line level output and I think uh, the amp probably expects something quite a bit lower so we might have to attenuate the output before connecting it to the amp. The other thing is that these guys are stereo so I'm either going to have to join the two channels together or probably just use one of the channels to send and then just receive the same channel on the other guy and ignore the second channel. That shouldn't be a problem. Let's have a look in detail at how these things connect up. If you look at those pins on the left there, you've got some markings on the board itself. The top one is plus five volts. The second one is ground. That would be your power supply. Then you've got another ground. Then you've got R in, which is right input. Then you've got audio ground. And then there's one which I think you can see which says L in, which is left in. So that's your stereo input. Now I'm only going to be using one of them. I certainly need to supply power to this thing. And I know this one's the transmitter because there's the labeling XL-01M-T for transmitter. 
Other than the red LED and a few markings, the receiver looks very similar. You've got your plus 5 volts and ground on the top two pins. The third one is connected to ground as well. Then you've got R out, that's your right channel output, ground, audio ground, and L out, which is your left channel output. Again, I'll only be using one of those. So this one, XL-01M-R, which is receiver. And this is the set that come with a very short antenna, which is just fine because these guys work on 2.4 gigahertz. And I believe there's 16 channels which they hop between to find one that's uh, got the least amount of noise or inter interruptions or interference. This actually has a switch, a push button switch, which you see in the center there. And the objective of that is if you come across a channel that's too noisy, you can hit it. It uh, pairs again with its, uh, with its partner on another channel. So you're basically forcing a channel change. Now the main problem I found with the previous version that I tried was that the power consumption was too high and batteries were getting drained at a fantastic rate. Now I'm going to test this out with uh, three AAA cells, 4.5 volts. Um, it says 5 volts in, but it works on 4.5. I've got to mention that uh, Nordic Semiconductor in conjunction with AKG Audio, they're very big on the microphone technology, have actually created a specific chip um, for a wireless mic system, which will probably be a better solution for what I want here, because A, it is mono. Secondly, uh, it's a selectable uh, latency uh, chip, so you can uh, choose how much quality versus time delay you want. And thirdly, um, the power consumption is ultra low. Now, those chips are fine. They probably, as I said, better than this one, but they haven't come out on one of these boards yet. And I really, really do not want to go into programming a, an Atmega a microprocessor and going through the whole procedure to create a little guitar wireless system, which would probably be a temporary thing anyway, because I know myself pretty well. And I know that very soon I'll probably get a Line 6 Relay G10. I just can't resist it. It's one of those things. But when those come out, and they will, I'm sure they'll come out. The Chinese are building these things like crazy. The minute something comes out, they produce it and they sell it for peanuts. The minute that comes out, that's going to be an next experiment. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire this up. I'm going to connect power to these things. I'm going to connect the, the receiver to the guitar amp, the guitar to the input of the transmitter without any kind of buffer or impedance matching or anything like that. And I just want to see if we get some sound. So we know if we've got something that's uh, workable or not. And uh, if, it's if it is, fine, we'll take it further. If it's not, hey, dump this in the box and wait for the next chip to come out. So I think we're just about ready to try it out. I've got the guitar connected in here. That goes into the input of the transmitter. I'm using uh, the right channel. I found these connectors that fit those uh, pins quite well. The, uh, so I'm using the right channel. The power is coming from this little battery pack. That's going to be three batteries. This one's shorted out. Uh, this thing here, this is the switch. So when you put it in, We've now got power. Now, the receiver. The amplifier is connected to that guy, and I know it's connected because, if you can hear that, that's the amp input, and that's connected to the output right channel there as well. And the power, again, is from this uh, battery pack. I'm using three AAA batteries. And here, when I plug that in there, I will have effectively a, a full circuit. So we hear something. Now comes the moment of truth. What we're interested in seeing now is just how long it takes before you hear the tone when I pluck the string. So listen to that. seems pretty good. That is actually very, very responsive. That's a 
lot better than I expected. There's a bit of a hiss coming out of the speaker, but um, that's probably got to do with no shielding on the system. So I'm pretty happy. That sounds good and it doesn't seem to be distorted. Surprisingly, the impedance is not a problem, but I'm still going to have to take care of that when I take it to the next step. Uh, the impedance, uh, the input impedance of the transmitter, as well as the uh, level coming out of the receiver into the amplifier. We'll have to see how we, what we do with that. But so far, yeah, latency, very low. Certainly not something that I can discern. I'm surprised. Okay, great. So with the lag issue, or rather the latency issue, more or less taken care of. We don't seem to have that much lag or latency. Um, the range comes into question and as you can see there's no question of range here. They're sitting side by side. But um, what I need is basically, you know, six, seven meters and this thing advertises at something like 30 meters, but uh, I don't need that much. You know, I'm talking about sitting on the sofa with the guitar and playing while the amp is, you know, in the next room, but with sliding doors open so I can hear it. And so distance doesn't seem to be a problem. The other thing I want to know is how much current consumption does this thing actually need? And I'm going to set up an ammeter in series with a battery pack just to see what kind of current consumption we're actually getting. So I've got the meter connected in series there with the battery pack. And this doesn't look too good. I'm reading about 92 milliamps, which is pretty high. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to go up if I hit the strings, but no, it's pretty constant. So we've got quite a high current consumption. These batteries will probably not last as long as I would like. So call it 100 milliamps, 100 milliamps. Um, that's 0.1 milliamp hours, and if I play for 10 hours, it's one amp hour. So if I use uh, 1000 milliamp hour uh, batteries, I should get about 10 hours. That's good enough. I never play for long anyway. And, um, but it is higher than I would have liked. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see just how practical this is. But I think it's good enough now for me to take it to the next step. I'm not too concerned about the uh, current consumption of the receiver because the receiver is the one that sits by the amp anyway. So I can always just put a battery pack or a, uh, a fixed power supply to it. It doesn't have to be moved, moved around much. But the transmitter certainly is a bit of a concern. 100 milliamps is probably more than double what I expected. And it's probably why these things have not really taken off that much. Because, you know, you'd wonder why something as good as this um, hasn't become universally used. And it's probably for that reason. Too much current consumption. This is why that other one, the uh, microphone one, which is mono, and is made with uh, ultra high, ultra low current consumption, is probably the one that's becoming commercial. And so that's probably a, a better bet. But for something like this, for me to doodle on, literally, you know, 15, 20 minutes a night or whatever, this thing will probably last long enough. And I can always put a bigger battery. I can put a nine volt battery and, uh, and use a voltage regulator to five volts. Now those nine volt batteries have uh, quite a bit of power. Um, ah, I'll see. Anyway, this experiment has worked so far. And I'm quite happy with the result. It works, which is uh, the first step. So my next step is take it to the quote unquote production stage where I uh, sort out things like uh, how to box this thing, how to connect it to the guitar. Um, obviously, I don't want to make it a huge connection because that'll just defeat the object and see how I'm going to use this, how I'm going to uh, make this a practical application and when I do that I'll come back with a repeat with another video with uh, the results. Right, thanks for watching. See you soon.